Russ Douglas 232 again, here in the Brucey Bonus garage. Bonus because the, the heat is on and uh, there's sleet and snow outside. And we've got Kev Gun's prototype pad mount, replacement mount. So, it's, uh, and Bruce has just commented, nice and uh, chunky. Um, one piece of alloy, the main body of it. And uh, we've got the anchor here and then these two, that one and that one, are slotted. So that gives us the windage adjustment. Here's a standard pad mount for the, is this for, this for the 008, isn't it? Yeah, it's double, yeah, it's not the yeah. Um, and here's Kev Gun's, or Kev's replacement mount. This is Kev Gun, by the way, on the Night Vision Forum and the Air Gun Forum. I'll put a link to those below. Thanks very much, Kev. Um, so this Kev handed this over at the British Shooting Show ten days ago, and uh, see we've got a recoil arrestor stud which is fixed, three pretty decent solid uh, nuts, deep nuts for uh, screwing the Picatinny rail tight, and nice chunky body, rear channel. As I say, there's two slotted holes, so. Those windage um, grub screws adjusted, and for the elevation, we have grub screw here with and two locking grub screws left and right. Okay. Okay. So we just we've just weighed the old, the original Par 008 mount is 100 grams, and the Kev's replacement mount is the fully adjustable mount is 180. So, but it's a lot chunkier. A lot more substantial. Still an alloy body and steel screws. So here's Bruce lining it up. And you can see yeah. there's a little bit of movement there. So these these two holes are the two that are slotted to allow but anchoring around that point. Pivoting to, around the back one, yep. To allow windage adjustment. And then once you get once you get your wind, you would you would actually tighten these screws a little bit more than I have at the moment, so yeah. it's quite difficult to move them. Yeah. Once you get your windage right, then you would use these two screws here to lock to lock the body against the screw yep. to stop it moving that way. Yep. Similarly, as, as we've done with the the other oh wait mount, the elevation adjustment is through that screw there, yep. basically lifting the back of the mount. Yep. To, no, to base, replace, basically to replace yeah, shimming. Yeah, that's right, exactly. So you've now got a mount that can do both elevation and windage. So really, um, there should be no reason for not being able to get the par practical centered when you're zeroed. Yep. But I was also going to set it up on a piece of Picatinny rail mounted in a mounted in a vice. Looking at the the measure on the wall, we'll set it say five meters. Yep. What we'll do is we'll then see how much. Yeah. Windage adjustment there is. Yeah, see the range of windage. And then we can actually do an MOA calculation to say, right, this this mount has got a horizontal or a windage adjustment of X number of MOA. Yeah. And we can probably try and we'll, we'll move, we'll put the tape up and down and try to do the same thing for elevation. Yeah. So that Kev gets some idea of what, what he's got, basically. Because yeah. I'm not sure if he knows at the moment how much adjustment right. he actually has. No, well, I believe he's um, he's had one or two other people have a little wee look at this. And... Uh, He's waiting. He's he's busy finishing his last couple of drone mounts. So okay. he's but he's sort of pulled off that temporarily to manufacture this. Send us the prototype. Once he's finished the drone mounts, he'll have our feedback, mm -hmm. and um, he can make any changes that he thinks are necessary, if if there are any. You can you can definitely see the genesis from the old Neil McKillop drone mount on this. Um, I've got one of Neil McKillop's mounts on on my twenty two two fifty for it on a Tika, um, and. It's just the best mount ever, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see. And, and Kevin quite openly said that he used that 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 uh, McCulloch mount as a kind of basis for this one. As a template, you, you could have, and you could do a lot worse than that because it's a brilliant mount. So this is, I have no doubts in my mind, in the slightest way, that this is going to solve all the mounting problems in the park. Yeah, and we've got. How does the the sort of uh, engagement length of that Picatinny? How does that compare to the? Oh, it's much hard one. Well, if you can. If I put the if I put the slots, the 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 slot in line, 
you can see the, the, the base length of Kevin Mark is much longer yeah. than the pard. Yeah. And because of the design of it, it's where you've got where you've got this complete complete side. Yeah. So there's a lot more moving friction. in and out. I don't I don't think we're going to see any problems with the with the with the rail not sitting on top as no. we did as we do with the with the with the pad. I mean the, the classic problem with the pad that most people have is that the that when you right if you look down there. When I screw the part mount in, you can see the, the actual, it actually lifts up. There's a gap at that side. Yeah. It's not easy to see, but you can actually when you tighten up, you can feel it. Sorry. That's sorry. okay. Just, just look along that. Yeah, we can we can see the angle. You can yeah. see right. So it's exactly the same way. Excuse the noise of the, the heater, but it's still snowing outside. Okay. Is that down? Yeah, that's in the slot. And we, we just noticed Bruce tried with withdrawing, took one of these extra length nuts off and the washer, unscrewed the, the Allen bolt from this side, and at the moment it is threaded for the whole of the thickness of uh, this mount. So. There are, there are possible ways Kev could maybe uh, sort of speed his manufacturing rather than tapping it all the way through, but you can, at, the, at the moment it's certainly very, very you thorough. Can, you can now see that that sits perfectly level on top of the rail. Yeah. I'm not seeing Square. any any no. gaps at all. No, so that's, that's what that problem fixed. Yeah. We've got a much longer engagement yep. of that rail clamping um, from three bolts um, so that's the friction, the extra friction on there. That's going to be very solid. Yeah, that that, that is not going to move. And I'm not sure if the bolts he's used are high tensile. They could easily be made high tensile if they're not. Um, that 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 is going to be extremely solid on the rail. There's no way that's moving. No. And this is now so rigid. There's not going to be any movement there. No. The only movement you're going to have is where it's designed to have movement in yes. the adjustment section yeah. up here, where the mount meets the, the rail on the inner side of the scope. So you're going to get movement like that for windage uh, and yep. for elevation. Lockable but one, movements. But once you've got the, the set the position you want, you can lock that off and that's going to be it. It should be absolutely stable after that. Yep, excellent. Um, <clears throat> now, what you can see here, you can see how Kevin's made this to try to minimise the difficulties in machining. He's made... And I'm not going to give I'm not giving any trade secrets away here, but the central part of this is one single piece, yeah. and he's machined the slot that locks into the picket the grooves in the picatinny rail. This movable part, obviously, is a bit that locks in at one side, and this part here is also he's machined that separately. You can see there's a, a join there, yeah, so he can make the groove easily. Yeah, and a long one long bar. Yeah, what he's made, he's, he's probably made these two pieces, one piece of bar. Yeah. Machined the slot. So it's identical. Then chopped them and drilled and tapped or threaded that, and then he's pinned. You can see, just see the pins. He he's pinned this piece onto the main body. Yeah. To make that the fixed side of the 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 clamp. Yeah. And this the moving side of the clamp. Now there's there's no the the, the recall arrestor stud is fixed rather yep. than it's removable. machined out of solid. Yeah. The looks of things. Yeah. Let me just check again. Look at these off and how we look. And I'm 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 not I'm just trying to show people that this is how it should be done. You know, I yeah. I've got great respect for, for Kevin the work that he does. Oh no no he's not he's what he's done is he's oh this is even better actually because he's milled a slot in the aluminium and he's used a piece of steel keyway. Right. Into that to form the recoil arrest of the magnet. Just yeah. exactly what I'm going to do. Bruce's handy magnets. So that's not magnetic. Yeah. So you can, let me just show you. That's the aluminium body, not magnetic. This is the arrest of stud. Magnetic. Excellent. So that's that's even better still. 
that that's that that will not definitely doesn't matter what rifle you put this on to, that ain't moving. Right. Well done, Kev. Like that. That is that is the right way to do it. That's a, yeah, that's and it's tight in there as well. Yeah. That's that's not coming out. Impressed with that. Yeah. Maybe the maybe um, people before these, the, Kev said he might put these into mass production via a CNC machinist. But in the meantime, if he doesn't. There might be requests for by some people to have those uh, recoil arrestor stud bars as removable, um, which is doable. Um, but I would I'm, imagine, sure, yeah. I'm sure he'll still use a steel bar for solidity. Yeah, I mean, you you, you really want you really want that to be tight. Uh, I mean, if you'd if you'd machined this from the as part of the aluminium, then it, it couldn't move. But but it would have been softer. Yeah. And and you know if you've got a heavily recoiling rifle, you've got backwards and forwards motion. Yeah. Or, or stress on the edges of that and it's far better that that be steel than it would be aluminium because yeah. it can handle that backwards and for, forwards um, yeah. forces the snap of the better. recoil yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well i'm i'm seriously impressed with this I, I should actually get my 22250 out and show you the new mccullet mount that okay and, and let you see, let you see how <laughs> the similarity <laughs> While Bruce is tinkering, I just wanted to mention, Kev estimates, don't hold him to this, but Kev estimates approximately 140 quid for these mounts for the time being. Yeah, I have to say, this is a, <laughs> Russ now is having a laugh, this is, this is not a toy boy mount, this is a real man's scope mount, okay? <laughs> All woman's. <laughs> chunky, <laughs> yes. chunky, I like it, I like it, it's real chunky, it's solid, um, you know. And it, it's built for the purpose. It's built for the purpose. Now, Russ has mentioned... Uh, it, that Kev might be looking for around 140 quid. That is not a lot of money to pay for something as well made as this. If you look at some of the mounts going around, um, a lot of them are in the 200, 300 quid mark. Yeah. Um, so this, you know, this is not cheap. There's a lot of work's going into this. Yes. There's a lot of work. Going but there's into a lot of thought. A that lot of thought. Those those long work. channels are really going to grip. Mm -hmm. A lot of friction. Yeah. Yep. A lot of bearing yep. surface. Yep. It's not going to slip. Yep. And given, um, and given it, it's not probably not going to be a mass-produced item, where you can get the the price down by producing millions of them. Yeah. Um, then you know, uh, yeah. You, you just start, if if you want if you're having problems with your part and you kind of get a zero or it won't hold zero or you're not happy with the amount, this is a solution to your problem. Yeah. This is going to hold zero. It's going to be adjustable. You'll get the reticle right in the center of the screen when you're zeroed. Which is what I, I know a lot of people like. Yeah. Then this is the solution to your problem. If you pay, you're paying. Let's say you, you buy an 08 for what 500 quid, yeah. which are roughly what they're going. And you pay another 140 for one of these. Yeah. You're up to 640, but you've got you're sorted. Yes. It's a one-time you, deal. You're you, sorted. You're not going to worry about it no, afterwards. No, no. Absolutely not. Um, now, if you're if you're some of the lucky people that, that manage to get away with the part mount and and can use it and don't have any problems in it. And I have to admit that, that on my 08 and 08 LRF, the, the, the power mounts are fine, I'm happy with them. Yeah. Um, but I know that a lot of people aren't, then this is absolutely the solution. Yeah, and because you've also got, you've got three gr screws to grip this, you've got a bit of redundancy oh, in there. Oh yeah, yeah. If one of these somehow gives, which isn't gonna happen, yeah. but if one of those does, uh, the other two, whether it's the end ones or one, two at either end, um, Still gonna they're still going to grip it, well, and they, that, they, that long rail, that long bearing surface. Can you just micrometer that the length of the bearing surface rail? Uh, sorry, Bruce. And yeah, just, that's distance here. Yeah. So the, the gripping surface for your Picatinny rail. 86 millimetres. 86 mil. Which is a lot better than on the other one. What are the, the individual length of the two rails? Well, if I go from if I go from one end to the other, for just just less than 50. But all together, if you measure those two little bars, nine, nine eight. mil. So you've got 18 mil of bearing surface, the worst case on that rail. Against what you say, 80? 86. 80, 86 on here. 86. That's a fair difference. Yep. Yeah. And I was just saying, as these are not mass produced yet, I dare say if any of you wanted Kev to make this steel keyway removable, I, guess, I dare say you can do that on a, on a, you know, yeah. on a batch for the for those people who want it so, uh, to yeah. be removable. Now, if you were totally, totally harm-fisted, and 
screwed that in so tight mm. that it broke yep. the screw, which has happened with the part. If you break the screw, then you just unscrew it and get another one. Yep. Another M5 by... What is it? M5 by... Maybe I'm measuring this wrong. M5 by 45. Okay. That would that would be very, I, but as I say, I I'm looking. That's bright. That's bright finish. That's, is it stainless? Maybe it's not. No, no, I think it's stainless. I, it is stainless. It's not stainless. Ah, it's, yeah. It's just stainless. Yeah, stainless steel for these um, for these bolts. Yeah. I, and I, the, the only way a, a magnet would stick to that is it would be if it was Martensitic stainless, which is quite rare. Yeah, that's right. Most most stainless is not. And he's used stainless for the nuts as well. Right. So, I mean, that's obviously for, that's obviously to prevent them rusting up. Yeah. If they get wet. Yeah. Um, so... The final think. mount, we believe, is going to be um, Cerakoted. Um, so it'll be oven baked to... Yeah. Uh, bake the colour on. And uh, that'll protect the main... He could... He, that'll protect the main yeah, body of the thing yeah, from he, any corrosion. He could anodise it. I mean, these, these are anodised. Yeah. These are not Cerakoted. These are not no, I believe, I believe Kev does... Cerakote if himself. He do, if he's got, yeah, Cerakote is fine. Yeah. I have no issue with Cerakote at all. Yeah. No, overall, that really does look excellent. The dog's danglies. Yep. Cool. So this is Bruce's 22 Hornet rifle. Uh, no magazine, no ammunition. Um, and he's just put the bolt in to check the bolt clearance against the Kev's mount. So, this action, this receiver, has two 15 mil dovetails. And then this is a, a 15 mil dovetail to Picatinny adapter. So we're just showing this, but as you can probably tell, it's a little bit high. So, so to use this, Bruce would need a cheek razor. And we're just gonna try Kev's mount and see if it'll, if it, it'll rather than fit a 22 mil Picatinny, we're gonna see if it'll fit the 15 mil dovetails of this CZ527. No, so we're just quickly looking at Kev Gunn's mount, but because his mount is specifically built for 22mm Picatinny, it's not going to come down small enough to fit the 15mm uh, dovetails of this uh, this rifle. Okay. But, okay. but it, it's something he could maybe do in the future for custom orders. Yeah, I mean, if, if you were going to use Kev's mount with uh, a typical air rifle or rim fire, which has got an 11mm dovetail, yeah. then you can use those the same adapters that we've been using. Yes, the snapping adapters. The snapping adapters will work perfectly well with this. Yeah, um, but for this particular rifle. For action, this particular rifle, no, it's a bit of an oddball, that. This CZ527. Yeah, it's a, just the way it's made. Yeah, you would need Kev's mount to be, you need a custom version with that kind of baseline and this separation to keep the chamber ejection port clear. So, just a, just a thought I had. While Bruce puts, restores this uh, grub screw, we just measured, it's an M8 grub screw at the back of Kev's mount, which goes in this hole here, beside the uh, the rearmost screw, and it's a flat-topped M8. So, uh, it's a nice, basically that's the shimming M8. So that's, it's got a flat top, so it'll not, it'll not sort of... Uh, and a, a, a nice wide bearing surface on the yeah. underside of the, of the pad, so the pad's going to go up and down straight. It's not going to twist off to one side like you could do with a smaller screw. No. Again, that's a, a nice feature. Well done. Nice touch. Well, that's a nice touch, and the fact that these adjustments and locking screws bear on the... The head of the screw rather than on the thread of the screw. Yeah, that's a nice touch that, as well. That, that means that you're not going to damage the threads in the screw. No. And, um, and this fella being M8... Oh. It'll not be damaged by these little locking grub screws no, either. Not at all. It's, it's, it's nice and chunky. That's right. Nice Excellent. one, Kev. Excellent, Kev. Hi there. Hope you found that uh, little uh, video in Bruce's man cave uh, interesting. Uh, all that's left is to come next is uh, the results. Don't forget to keep the keep on track with the latest that's going on in the night vision world: optics, images, spotters, thermal, night vision, infrared, whatever. Um, keep your eye on the Night Vision Forum. I'll put the link to that below. Might see you on there, answer any questions, whatever. Enjoy your shooting. <laughs> Please uh, feel free to share this, um, subscribe, pass the word, especially to friends who've got powered 008s or 008 LRFs. Contact Kevgun on the Night Vision Forum for uh, any 
um, orders, um, put, to put your name in the queue, because uh, these, these mounts are going to be very popular, and also to uh, discuss any bespoke requirements you may have for your own mount. Thanks for watching. We've got the memory card slot off on Bruce's PAR 008, so it'll be picking up my voice hopefully. We're in Bruce's man cave, and we're, we're testing Kevgun's um, adjustable PAR 008 mount. So you're over to the, is it the right or the left, Bruce? I'm now in fully right, as far right as you can go. Yep. And you can see the scale, the, the, the reticles on this 40mm line. We're reading a total of 640mm at the moment. I'll pull the scope horizontally to the left as far as it'll go. And you can see we're at 575. Now we're at a distance of 5 metres. That's exactly 5 metres between the objective lens of the pad and the tape measure taped to the door of my garage. So that's what, a 65mm horizontal adjustment at 5 metres. We'll sit down and do the calculations in MOA in a wee while, but at 5 metres that's a fair amount of adjustment. He then rotated the tape on the garage door vertical and uh, what we did was we, we had a chat about this and in the end we had felt the maximum um, for example, the maximum I've ever shimmed uh, any of my uh, PAR 008s or 008 LRFs by is about 0.9, maybe 1 millimetre. So what Bruce did is he, he lifted up the back of the PAR um, within Kev, Kevgun's mount, slipped in a 2 millimetre drill, read off the display on the tape measure, took it out, dropped it back down, elevates the, the, the uh, crosshairs and read off the display and that that's that should be more than enough elevation adjustment than anyone would ever would ever need so that eight millimeter vertical grub screw eliminates the, the need for shimming and makes it very adjustable and uh, very fine tunable so here's the results okay that's a two mil drill wet in and we're reading 722 okay if i take the drill bit out and let that come down flat we're reading Oh, sorry, 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 it just dropped a bit. Beg your pardon, it's nice. It's going to be higher than that. So that's back if we were 575. Okay. So, with no lift, with nothing in the back of the scope, it's 575. And what did we say with, with the, the two mil draw bit in? 722. 722, okay. So, 147 mil. Yeah.